Oh, hey, hey. Oh. What? Terrible. You were just going to say that regardless of what I said. I was not. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Harry's. That's harrys.com, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, and they sell high-quality shaving supplies. We're talking handles, blades, shaving creams, as well as sets that come with all three of the above. It's awesome, and it's also affordable as shit. You can get a shave set, which is a handle, three blade heads, and a tube of shaving cream starting at $15. And then if you want more blades, they sell those for at most $2 a pop. That's right. It sort of goes along with our uh, theme of sponsors, which are, you know, inexpensive ways to upgrade your life to adulthood. Yeah. And, and Harry's, yeah. People that we personally like. Exactly. The other theme of our sponsors. You know, you shouldn't be using the same blades that you were as a 13 year old when you're 18, it's 22. It's dangerous. It's not even just unstylish, it's dangerous. But it's okay? mostly unstylish. Both. But it check. Is scary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're just, I think, afraid of blades. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They're sharp, okay? Well, you should be throwing the ones away. You shouldn't be using the same Look, ones. Look, Harry's though. makes dull, dull <laughs> blades. They're <laughs> no, no, not no, no, sharp. No, They're no, not no. dangerous. They're state-of-the-art. They are absolutely amazing. High quality, low price. They are sharp. And, uh, yes, please do check them out. They're a great, you know, if you're a dude or if you're a girl with a, with a man in your life who uh, you're looking for a gift. Maybe he's about to meet your parents and you want him to be clean-shaven. Oh, Father's Day is also right around the corner. No, is it? I don't well, not around that's... this corner, but like around, around Supplemore corner. corner. Yeah, yeah exactly. Corner. And uh, Harry does that cool thing with every order that Harry's takes. It gives a dollar equivalent of a razor blade to the mission. Continues an amazing organization that supports returning vets. So not only are you going to support our podcast, you're also supporting uh, the Mission Continues uh, organization. And I think they're both pretty noble causes. Yeah. Uh, fighting for our country and having a podcast on the internet. <laughs> they're both equally noble. So support us and support the troops. Uh, so check out harrys.com. Oh, and if you use the code if I were you when you check out you'll be uh, eligible to win a free year of blades boom and uh, if you do if you do get something we're gonna do that thing where forward us that receipt at if I were you show at gmail.com and we'll give you a shout out next time we plug Harry's so check out harrys.com and enjoy the episode bye Hashtag dope. If I were you. All right. Hashtag pretty, dope. That was really tight. I like that hashtag dope shout out. You know what it sounds like at the beginning is dream of Californication. I was I thought it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers when it started. I was like, <laughs> holy shit! But instead, it was Connell Pritchard. Ooh, hey, what everyone. an interesting name. Connell Pritchard does not sound like somebody that plays folksy music <laughs> on a guitar. What does it sound like? It sounds like somebody, it, was, it sounds like a Republican senator. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's both, if you can believe that. <laughs> senator Pro Temp Mr. From Tennessee. Pritchard. <laughs> the floor is yours. If you got a sticky situation. Holy shit, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'll pass all the laws. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet, hosted by us. I'm a here. And I'm Jacob. And uh, this episode is kind of cool and different for two reasons. One, I called myself Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three reasons. Uh, one, you called yourself Jacob. All right. Two, two, we're drinking during it. We're getting drunk as flunk. <laughs> <laughs> More so you than me. Well, I'm already. I showed up here gone, <laughs> gone high, deaf, and dumb. <laughs> if anything, I should be drinking coffee. But fuck that. I'm getting wasted. It's 9:52 p.m. on Saturday night, and we thought it would be fun to, while we're drinking, uh, record a record an episode, which is either a great idea and it'll loosen us up and make us funnier, or the worst idea we've ever had. Right. Yeah. I think it's the second one, but like, I just wanted to get drunk. <laughs> There's definitely some people who have never heard this episode who just heard that for the first time and turned it off. <laughs> I want to watch, listen to two losers get drunk. We should have been doing this as a video episode because mm. Amir drinks so rarely that like I think I'm more excited than anyone that could possibly be listening right now. Right, it's good to like document it in video because otherwise people won't believe you. <laughs> um, Wait, what's the third reason? The third reason, what was the third? Oh, you haven't heard some of these questions. Oh, that's right. Usually we, um, we never know what we're going to say, but usually we choose the questions together. And this time, I was coming back from a family vacation. I missed uh, the, the screening of the questions, and I'm going in blind. That's right. So these questions, 
Not only have you guys never heard of him, but Jacob hasn't heard of him either. Yeah, Jacob. So also, if I'm not funny during this, it's because I'm drunk, okay? <laughs> not because I've never heard the questions before. I'm usually good on the fly. <laughs> usually Jake has copious notes and bits <laughs> and riffs that are ready to go for every possible question. But this time he is completely and utterly blind about it. All right, should we? right, let's take a swig of this uh, Gatorade yeah. bottle that I filled with vodka before yeah. we get started. <laughs> we'll do that and I'll explain what the rules are. Okay. So basically we, we have an email address, if I were you show at gmail.com and people can submit questions you know when they're in a difficult place or a I'll sticky... take over here you go ahead you drink this uh -huh. in a sticky situation you email us and we might not be helpful but we are going to do our best to make fun of you and uh, at least make you feel a little more lighthearted about your situation that's right and you can also email us uh, if you have a theme song submission Connell gave, gave a great one earlier and now uh, we need more we always need more we we feed off of these okay it is cool how talented our fan base is that's so uh, much more talented than us yeah like all we do is can t all, all we can do is talk yeah humorously sort well, actually of. if you go back to episode one i actually play the first theme song <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it's awful I think. yeah well don't go back don't go listen to it but just know that i can strum the guitar <laughs> at the very least i can strum a I guitar can strum it uh so these are real emails from real people we give them fake names to preserve their anonymity oh, but i assure you a theme yeah yeah i already have a theme in my head all right cool sorry um yeah so that's that so why don't we uh why don't we get started as it were as it were as it weren't uh, this one comes from Zach. Zach. Sorry, I mean, I'm fucked up. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I had You're one a... swear and I'm done, so, man. You're already puking. Uh oh, Zach just killed, just gave us the bonus question. That's when we do a little bump of cocaine. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How do you know it's the bonus question? All right, I mean, this one's from Zach, so uh, we're going to do some cocaine. <laughs> We're not doing cocaine. I already feel borderline. Oh! <laughs> I already feel bad enough drinking on this goddamn thing. It's funny that you said "uh oh" because my brother Ben said that that's one of his favorite bits that you do, and I don't even know that if you knew that it was a bit. Oh, is it like when I say "uh oh"? Yeah. What is it? I You're just even... like whenever you go into like, "Hey, I hate myself," and "uh oh," I wake up and I'm <laughs> yeah. still there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. Uh oh, because it's so like playful and positive. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. I'm doing cocaine. <laughs> and whoa, I'm the worst human being in the world. <laughs> Whoops. I'm suicidally depressed. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I am bad. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> First question. This one comes from Zach. My deal is I've been single for a long time after a series of terrible relationships, and I've kind of reached the point thinking maybe I'm better off alone. However, I've met this really sweet girl who I like a lot. And I think she likes me too, but I'm worried that if we get together, the relationship will share the same fate as all the others have. I'm sure, I sure as shit don't want to hurt this girl, and I'm a little scared of being hurt again too. I guess my question is, if every relationship you've had in the past failed miserably, what, do you, what would you guys do? Toda for being awesome. Sincerely, Zach. Jesus Christ. I'm not fucking ready for this question, man. <laughs> I was like, I was, this was like a playful shit. And yeah, this guy's I took a like, a wig of vodka. And now I think I might cry. I just drank a fifth of vodka. Dare me to cry? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Zach, and I don't believe in love. <laughs> well, does this resonate with you at all? I, you know what? I think it resonates at all. I think it resonates with me a little too much. Um, yeah, shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you think it's like maybe if everyone has one person, then you're going to go through a lot and uh, until you find that one person, the one person that makes you realize that maybe all your relationships were doomed because Do you, you, think you weren't with her. Do you think everyone has one person? Do you think everyone has one person? Probably not. I'm very logical and mathematical. There's probably, you know, one, if like your, your soulmate is one in a million, there's what, 600, 6,000 of them on earth? Right, that's a nice, that's kind of actually, you know, as logical as that is, it's sort of nice to think about it like that. Here's where I'm coming from. Uh, I'm, I agree with you a little bit. There's, I don't think there's such thing as one person for everybody. So I think since there's so many people to choose out there and you haven't been able to do it yet, Zach, I think there's something wrong with you, buddy. <laughs> oh my God, you ass. I can't tell if I'm talking to Zach or looking in a mirror right now, <laughs> but I think... I think you're a monster. <laughs> what? Why? Just because, if anything, he's very self-aware. He's saying that he's had terrible relationships. He's sort of already blaming himself, and he's afraid that he's going to hurt this girl you preemptively. Will. You absolutely will. If that's not. what you're afraid of, you will. Here's another thing. Maybe all those relationships were doomed because 
they were the first, second, and third relationship you've had. Maybe you have to go through a ton of relationships to realize, uh, to find out what you want. So you get so, better when you're drunk. You, you, get, you get more so, positive. <laughs> so you're, 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 one, you're more experienced, and two, you're older. So with age comes wisdom, with experience comes wisdom, and maybe this is the girl that turns it all around. I believe in true love, and you should stay together forever. And uh, Zach, I think you are a, a jerk of the human, actually. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm kidding. I'm with you. I fucking, yeah, yeah, totally. That's, uh, it's true. You get better with time. You learn. You grow. And maybe now, since, you, since you've got all these bad relationships under your belt, you're ready. You know what it takes to, to not let a good thing go. Yeah, you don't preemptively break up with someone because all of your previous relationships were bad. Right. At the very least, I wouldn't do that. I just go into it with an open mind and uh, just try to not be so hard on yourself. That being said, Zach, if this one fails, I mean, at four, I feel like you've, you've reached your threshold. You've had the entire uh, buffet and it's time to go home. And that's enough, Zach. You're full, sir. Yeah, okay. You really, this hey, is not all but, you can uh -oh, eat. Uh-oh, I can be your wingman, pal. Because, yeah, I've had more than four failed relationships, and uh, I'm not trying again. So <laughs> let's do this. Let's hit the town, Zach. <laughs> me and you. Picture me and you at this table drinking a vodka Gatorade. <laughs> God, that's, uh, that's weird for me because where, where does that put me? I don't know. Me and Zach, I really think we could nail, it, nail a podcast. <laughs> we already got Toda down. <laughs> All right. Thanks for writing in, Zach. Um, Toda. Toda Rabba. Let's go on to question number two. Numero Question duo. numero duo. This one comes from AC Slater. I'm still trying to figure out the theme. <laughs> Zach, I know. I don't know. I'm, right. a, I'm about to start my freshman year of college, and after talking to my roommate, I think he might be gay, which I have no problem with. <laughs> I know that just because he's gay does not mean he will try anything with me, but it would make me uncomfortable if he did end up hitting on me. What would you do if that happened, and how should I handle overnight guests? Even if he's straight, I don't know what to do if he brings a girl home. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> this email started off so seemingly positive, saying, oh, you know, he might be gay, which I don't have a problem with. But it seems like he does have a problem with right. it. Right. It's so subtle. What like, if he did end up hitting on me? I think, dude, no. <laughs> he won't. Tell you what, based on this question, you're not anyone's type. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's such a funny thing, and I th I feel like I I was probably I guess you know we can't eat, like fault him totally because he's a he's like seventeen years old, and I was probably that dumb. We're like, oh man, if my roommate's gay, what if he hits on me? You're not that fucking hot, <laughs> dude. Every gay guy in the world, when you walk down the street, do you imagine when you're walking down the street, every girl wants you? Yeah. Like, why would you assume that for every guy? <laughs> if I go, if I go to any like situation, if I go into a situation thinking that some girl is going to be hitting on me, that's no. You're so full of yourself. I, I realized that a good way to find out like how homophobic you're actually being is to like replace gay with a nationality, and just and that it makes it come off as so much more uh, racist. For Let's example. Go. I think he might be black, which I have no problem with. I just know that just because he's black doesn't mean he'll try anything. But it would make me uncomfortable if he ended up talking to me. What would you do? How would you handle over, overnight guests? Even if he's white, I don't know what to do if he brings home a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that put it into perspective, didn't it, AC? You're a meanie. <laughs> You're not as open-minded as you think. You're small-minded. Yeah. But you know what? College is about expanding your horizons. So I... Personally, hope he is gay. Maybe you need that. Maybe you need to not be so close-minded. And, you know, if he does hit on you, I, I personally hope you want to kiss him on the mouth back. Yeah, because you know what? College is about new experiences. And if he does, if he's straight and he brings someone home, then hop into bed with him. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly you're having a menage a trois. <laughs> Only instead of two girls and a guy, it's three dudes. And a pizza place. <laughs> How is that for fair? Um, I don't know what to tell this guy. How should I handle overnight guests? What does that mean? It's college. That's, I feel like it went from like, one is a sort of a weird, you know, homosexual, homophobic question. The other one is just like <laughs> very standard, caught like, what do I do if my roommate brings someone home? Yeah. I don't know, leave or stay there and try to sleep. Have you ever been sexiled? Me? Yeah. Um, my roommate freshman year... God bless him. He was a good man. God bless that. Is he dead? <laughs> he was a good man. I, uh, no, he's not dead. He's just a I'm bad man I'm not trying to talk now. shit about anyone on the podcast. <laughs> My roommate, Ken, 
Ith, l- 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 b- I'm trying to think of a fake name. Uh, my my roommate Ryan. <laughs> nice. Ken Did Ryan. I, say, <laughs> I didn't say Ken. My roommate Ryan. Uh, he didn't have anyone sleep over during my freshman year. And did you? Uh, you know, I think I, I think that I had a couple guests over freshman year. But you didn't sexile Ken. No. You Ken, wanted him to be there for it. You, you sick, sick fuck. fuck. <laughs> uh, you got off to the fact that <laughs> It was Ryan, Ken's goddamn sister. <laughs> you wanted him to hear that. You needed him to hear that. <laughs> Deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You... You, Ken Ryan! <laughs> you, Lieutenant Ken. Uh, I, uh, I think, well, there's something kind of sexy about, like, we, oh, we have to be quiet. You know, we have to be quiet. Yeah, but it's never as quiet as you think it is in your head. You're like, no, we're being so quiet. Shh. Meanwhile, the room. <laughs> and then Ken the next day is just, like, not really talking to me. He's like, how was last night? Like, oh, what are you talking about? I just I went to bed. I heard you're mushy humping, you know. <laughs> you, can't, you can't silence the sound of a... Uh, Two wet genitals rubbing up against each other. You're not a fucking magician. College was the best. <laughs> wet genitals and futon springs. That was it. <laughs> you had a futon in your dorm room? Yeah, dude. I was sort of a beast in that regard. <laughs> in what regard? Yeah, man. Like, You're I'm 28 years what? old and still bragging about having a futon. Yeah, actually, man. <laughs> listen to this shit. We ended up going to Walmart freshman year. <laughs> we bunked the bed so we had all this space, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, we ended up getting this futon for, uh, say, 99 bucks. <laughs> you were nah, a beast. shit was tight. I was a beast in that regard. <laughs> in the fu- futonly speaking, I was sort of in beast mode throughout college. <laughs> One of those metal thingies, you know what I'm saying? A nice so it was very frame. light getting it up to the top of the third floor in the Hassler Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You can't do that, can you? You could just move in your own furniture. Um, I mean, I guess if you're a beast, the <laughs> in, in that regard, <laughs> the dean sort of has like this uh, this beast clause. I no, paid you're a beast you're, tax. You're allowed. You're anyone's allowed to have a futon in, in college. That's totally. You can loft your own bed and add a futon underneath it. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's probably different rules for different colleges, but the one that I went to. For how long I'm actually together? feeling a little drunk right now. Are you? Uh, pretty tipsy. All right, cool. Usually hits me when I stand up. Uh, stand up for a sec. No, I'm afraid to. I just fall over. <laughs> <laughs> I knock my microphone over. Um, one more question and then a break, or should we take the break now? Let's do. Let's try to do one more question because I feel like we went off the deep end with that one. We <laughs> we started off talking about homophobia and, and ended up talking about my futon. Uh, how did we get there? What a long walk we took. All right. <clears throat> This one is from Screech. (laughs) I was invited to go on a trip with my girlfriend and her mom. We'd be driving for 20 hours straight, and I'd like to spend time with my girlfriend. The thing is, her parents are really mean, and her dad doesn't know that I'm coming. (laughs) He's not even going on the trip, so I don't want to piss him off if he finds out because he'd never approve of me going. What should I do? What? (laughs) Well, I think we got to this guy too late. I think this trip already happened. But what a weird, weird, weird... The dad would be pissed to find out that you went on the trip that he didn't go on? The parents both hate you, but the mom's still (laughs) down to bring you. As long as she hides it from her husband. (laughs) Who would be livid to find out that you (laughs) went on the trip with her and his mom. And you want to go on this terrible, terrible trip so you can spend time with your girlfriend in secret... With her mom who hates you. This guy is so lovably nice. I feel like we usually have questions that make me hate our question askers. But this guy seems like an amazingly kind soul. Right. He's like, I mean, he's considering going on this trip. Yeah. Despite the fact that both of her parents hate him and he's going to be in the car with the mom. And the dad would disapprove if he found out. Yeah, why do they? You sound amazing. Why do they hate you? Maybe he's like an asshole, but his question is worded in such a nice way. Like yeah. he's like a very emotionally abusive boyfriend. So it's like, <laughs> why are we siding with him? Anyway, I don't know if I should go because my girlfriend's a real whale. I tell her all the time. <laughs> but I don't want to share a hotel room with her. That orca, that she orca. Um, I'm just afraid I don't have a hose to just hose her down when we get to the dry hotel room. Oh, that is not fair. (laughs) What? That's what you said. Did I? (laughs) Nah, nah, I don't even remember. So what should he do? It seems like you should... If I were you... (laughs) I think I know what you're going to say. 
hide in the trunk. Whoa. Yeah, hide in the trunk. No. And then at every gas station, have the, have the girlfriend. Have, I heard about on the news the other day. It made me sick. <laughs> me and Amir are always, always <laughs> vaguely trying to quote Stan by Eminem. Just know. How many references have you picked up so far this episode? <laughs> um, what should you do? I guess if you're going to be with your girlfriend, even despite the fact that her parents don't like you, uh, I guess spend as little time as possible with her parents or spend as much time as yeah. possible trying to you win them what? over. This, that's what I'm saying. The parents aren't even going. Dad's not there. But you know what you got to do is win the mom over. It's I, easier to I win think, the mom over. Uh, and especially on a road trip, long drive, like, oh, let me, let, let me take the wheel. You, you're tired. I'm going to – I can drive. I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to. That I'm was a, you. A, that right really now. was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was. You're gonna call you. me out for You're stuttering. Like, yeah, me stuttering. I really think okay. So. Yeah. And why, uh, next, why don't I read the question next time too? Like, uh, 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 I can barely breathe. And breathe I'm at illiterate. The same time. I'm illiterate. Yeah. You're yeah. illiterate. Yeah. 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 I noticed actually. <laughs> Cut to us, man. I fucking love you, dude. I fucking. I, You're the best, dude. You're funny on the fucking podcast. We just man. edited out two minutes of us making out at the end <laughs> of that fight. <laughs> Holy shit. No, I think this is your chance. This is the chance to get in on, uh, on the mom's good side. Have you ever had a parent dislike you? Um, yeah, I, I've had to win parents over before. Uh, because of them or because of you? I remember my first girlfriend, I, when I first met her, I had just dropped out of college. I just dropped out of my second college. So uh, I, dro- I was failed out of one you were college, a bad seed. dropped out of another. Yeah. And her dad met me. I worked in an ice cream store, and I was like, your life was what, going nowhere. How right. old were you? This is when I was 20. 20, dropped out of, or failed out of two colleges working at an ice cream store, and this you is, meet your girlfriend. This is parents. literally three months before I met you. Wow. If you can okay. imagine. So you were, okay, I was got it. Fresh, you were, freshly 20. June you had an eyebrow 2006, ring. 2006. Eyebrow seven. ring? I had the eyebrow ring. So nobody's liking Thank it. Thank God you took that off before you worked at College Humor. Yeah. You would have been known as that loser forever. That's true. I mean, there was that guy that, uh, that worked out his first day on crutches, and we called him <laughs> crutches for four years. <laughs> You would never live down the eyebrow I don't think we ring. would be where we are if I started with an eyebrow ring. I guarantee we would not. I would not want to hang out with you. Wow. That's how close-minded and small <laughs> I am. We were anyway, one... the guy that is worried that his roommate's gay. That's how close-minded <laughs> Amir is. You guys, should, you guys should be roommates. Who am I to judge is what you're saying. But I, I remember, I mean, if you really like the girl, this is, this is what happened with me. I just really liked the girl, so I stuck around, and eventually they like you. Because... I think what the parents ultimately want is somebody that's good to their daughter. Yeah. I don't brag a lot, but here's one really big brag that I have is that I'm great with girlfriend's parents. Oh, I can see that. I think I'm great with middle-aged women in general. You're great with parents. My, you just came, America just came on vacation in Nantucket with my family, and when you left, uh, number one, we had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> it was just not as fun. Which is what I hoped for. And, uh, we I said, were, I hope when I leave, you guys have a bad day and you pin it on me not being there. <laughs> we were at the beach and my mom was like, you know, I really feel like Amir is part of the family. Wow. And, and like, that's something my mom might say about multiple people because she's sort of like flowery like that. But, she but then it. my sisters and my dad agreed. <laughs> Your like, dad? My dad, who I, I don't wow. even think he thinks that I'm part of the family. <laughs> I think your dad called me the son he wishes he ever had. <laughs> he had two sons, and he likes Amir. But yeah, everybody was like, oh, I feel so comfortable around Amir. Amir's, Amir's part of the family. Why do you think that is? I guess because I think because you were just like joking around with people. Just, and you like just sense of humor. Yeah, but also like I felt like in Nantucket I could just like leave a room and you'd be fine. Right. Well, well I guess I'm very comfortable with your family. Yeah, Although well, I did so many years. I did make one mistake, which is when you came here tonight, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I bought a football and a frisbee for the house to have in quotations. Everyone yeah. was very touched by that gesture because you guys didn't have a football and a frisbee. Then when and I we left, played the fo- we played football. We played with the frisbee. That's great to hear. The other uh, day we played it. We had a great game of family <laughs> football and everyone had fun. That's Right. That's an amazing gift that I gave. But then when I landed, I jokingly texted Jake, hey, just realized I want slash need the football and Frisbee, which is like a joke we would make. Though I, was, I never said just kidding. Right. I thought you thought I was kidding. 
And then, I, I would get home from the beach and I had so many texts, like so many emails. And I just saw that. I was like, okay, got it. And then you came over today. You just got back from Nantucket and you had the football and the frisbee. <laughs> you gave it to me back. Your family thinks I'm a huge asshole. I can't point. believe you're coming at me right now like I fucked that up. You really did. Like, I fucked that up. So oh, You shouldn't have made that taking, joke. Why are you taking the football and the frisbee? Oh, Amir, uh, <clears throat> he, didn't, he wants it back. That's how fucking petty he is. He doesn't want you guys to have it anymore. It was $19. It never even occurred to me. Like, it didn't even occur occurred to me that it was weird that you wanted it back it, i was never even like jesus i thought this was for us so you didn't like you weren't like offended when i asked for it no i was just like oh he bought it he wants it what a mean <laughs> mean gesture for me to give a gift for four days and then demand it back i thought you just wanted a football to have to play did we play with football yeah we played with football i would like a football to have well, actually now you do. but now i have it under the wrong pretense i don't want you it. know what pal look at this oh my god you're showing me what? A, this a is a bruise. bruise? We, this is from, uh, from, uh, sorry, I don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we fi- we're finally drunk. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Such a tangent. This podcast is two hours long. <laughs> that was, that was, does that count as a break? I we think just so. Did? I, I think don't that, that was a love letter. I told you you're part of my family, and then we talked about how I fucking accidentally brought home a football. <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing. Oh, here's another thing that I wanted to mention at the begin- uh, in the middle of the show, which is where we're at now. Uh, last week we talked about, uh, some guy we called uncle Jesse who was debating whether or not he should hook up with his neighbor. I said it was a terrible idea. You said it was a good idea. And then you went on to say that, uh, do you remember exactly what you said? I believe I said if he was asking us, then he already has. And I got an email or text messages from Uncle Jesse, and he uh, confirmed that you were correct. That I was right? You were correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> Toda, Jesse! <laughs> so he said he was very impressed by your call that he had already hooked up that's with That's amazing. Hashtag dope. How did you know that? Because that's me. <laughs> Shit. That's how I operate. But I also got an, I got an update on the situation. This is our first updated situation. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm enthralled. The update is, though, she was a little too pushy this week. A lot of texts, and she even cold knocked on my door one night. So I put the kibosh on her, told her we should be buds. And I said, oh, so do you regret it or not? He said, I do not regret it, because nothing crazy stalker has happened, at least yet. There we go. No regrets. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you th- you th- looked at me like you were right. <laughs> no, I guess you were right. But that in that specific situation it could could have been a lot worse, and it could get a lot worse. Right? No, that's tough. The cold knock is is definitely tough. That's yeah, that's a dangerous territory. Yeah, yeah, that's a red flag for sure. Yeah, I think it was good to put the kibosh on a pal. But at least he he did like you called or had already slept with her. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know what? Let it cool off for a month, and then you can fuck her again. No problem. <laughs> I swear to God, man, you don't get it. You really can't. <laughs> by, by the way, by the time this podcast airs, he's already sleeping with her again. He's, he's going out it. with her. Jake's he's calling not- it like Babe Ruth pointing to left field. He's pointing at a girl's vagina have, with a bat. I, will, I guarantee you. By what is it? Saturday right now? Yeah. By Monday, you fucked her again, friend. I do not think that's true. Let's do it. I, I want to go two for. <laughs> Too. Double or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. All right. <clears throat> Uncle Jesse, that's his line. Mercy. Oh, yeah. Have mercy. Have mercy. All right. This is a question from Lisa Turtle. This is also a very sweet, sentimental question. Nice. So set your brain to that. Ready. Good evening, gentlemen. My best friend and I are currently about to face the worst predicament imaginable. We are being forced to break up and drift in separate directions, sailing alone in the sea of life. Did you just burp? <laughs> I just puked a little bit. <laughs> My best friend is going away to college an hour and a half away from me. I'm deeply depressed because we do everything together. We work together, hang out together, live in the same small town. We are what you'd say, creepily obsessed with each other. I can't go one freaking day without her. People at work often say being around you two makes me want to kill myself. I don't understand why. I think they are just jealous of our hashtag dope relationship and don't understand our abnormal sense of humor. My question to you brilliant fellows is how will I ever live without my partner and crime by my side? How do you guys, how do you think you guys would live without each other? Sincerely, Lisa Turtle. This is really, really perfect for this podcast because now we're like a little tipsy, mm-hmm. feeling a little sentimental. Mm-hmm. But that's what happens. In college, your high school friends drift apart. But it's not permanent, Lisa Turtle. It's not. And just because this girl is far away, she's not even that far away. She's only an hour and a half away. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah. You know, two encouraging things. Number one, um, most of Amir's friends, 
I, I know this about you, are from high school. Right. I didn't make any friends at college. And in I fact, I was like a mean, angry college kid, some would say. I alienated myself because yeah, I figured I had You're still known out. on the Berkeley campus yeah. as, as the hermit. <laughs> as an alien. As a troll. As, as an, an alien, alien troll. hermit troll, yeah. Uh, and I also did something very similar. I don't have a single friend from Facebook from Hunter College where I went to college. Interesting. No friends. Um, and I stayed friends with a lot of kids from high school. That's how it goes. If you, you're... Can stay, you guys can, can stay friends. Though that's not to say that you shouldn't make friends in college. I think we're both... Uh, no, I think if, this girl, if she wants to make this relationship work, she wouldn't speak to anyone else. Make any single other friend because you're all that she needs. But you know, another thing is I moved to L.A., Two years ago. Yeah. And we, me and Amir were separated for an entire year. That's true, but it was the most difficult year of my life. Completely unrelated to you moving to L.A. I was right, just yeah. my I own mean, personal if anything, shit. It was, <laughs> right. I mean, I was a goddamn distraction yeah. and nothing. <laughs> In a weird turn of events, I stubbed my toe every hour for a year. <laughs> I that. thought I had some kind of weird form of epilepsy, but it was insane how it some happened kind of every hour pain, on the hour. Pain Tourette's. Like some sort of weird Groundhog's Day where I would just stub my toe every top of the hour. I think that, I think that you guys can stay friends, especially if it's only an hour and a half away. Just stay in touch. But give each other space, too. I mean, you don't want to be the friend that's, like, getting jealous if she's going out. Or right. Maybe she's like going to make a third friend. You guys can start a trio. A tribe. Yeah. Three of a kind. There you go. Or or if she makes a new friend, she'll abandon you, which is also oh, pretty chill. Yeah, that's like fun. she's like, oh Miranda's, that's... oh Miranda's so funny, and then you oh, meet Miranda. Oh, that's cool. Can I hang out with you and Miranda? Uh, you wouldn't really like Miranda just because like she's not really your scene. Oh, she's like, yeah, totally. she's like, cool. All right, so let's me and you do something. No, 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 because me and Miranda are gonna go get high. Oh, you guys yeah. like drugs? Yeah, we do drugs now. I can get you into don't, drugs. No, you don't like drugs. I love drugs. No, I was telling her Trust that you don't me. really like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm high no, as a kite. You're faking it. Miranda like does it for real. <laughs> Like she was in fucking rehab. All right, speaking of, that's the fourth question. Is Molly time? <laughs> We've been getting drunk to this podcast, but now we do a little bit of Molly, a little bit of cocaine. <laughs> uh, pop the fourth question. We're sweating. <laughs> um, so yes, there is there is hope for you yet, Lisa Turtle. Yeah, totally. There's hope. And you know what? Now it's even easier with like Skype. I remember trying to video chat. Uh, what is now my ex-girlfriend when I was in college in 2002 and it was the most rudimentary like half-assed like remember the Logitech webcams that were a sphere like it upgraded every like two frames you like barely hear but all that you cared about was just screenshotting the one time she showed you her tit (laughs) well not necessarily that but yeah but now like you can FaceTime you can have like real life video chat from your phone without Wi-Fi it's crazy and it's only getting better and better yeah, I mean, I remember having Logitech and being like, I am on the cutting edge. <laughs> I could not imagine, like, real-time face FaceTime. Holy shit. It was so low quality. Me and my college girlfriend would 100% still be together if that existed. I, <laughs> I guarantee it. The only thing that split us apart was the frame rate at which we can video chat with each other. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Literally nothing else. Oh, mercy. I have to stop saying that. <laughs> All right. We're I thought at- you were saying, that's the next t-shirt. <laughs> oh, I mercy. think you're not allowed to have that because it's someone else's catchphrase. <laughs> I will definitely not. I'm still working on seize the cheese over here. A, pi- a picture of your face that says, oh, mercy. <laughs> I have a mullet. Not mercy. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> uh, we're at the half hour mark, but let's get through one more question. Uno mas, let's do it. Let's seize the cheese and squeeze one, squeeze one more in. One more swig from this Gator <laughs> This is, uh, we're getting silly now. Did you guys think this was a good idea or a bad idea? What do you think people will think? I feel like you know what I think. I think people will think it was a good idea at the top, like, oh, this is funny. And I bet, but by the end, yeah. I bet there's going to be a lot of questions. They're like, hey, you're a little inebriated. <laughs> you're a little hard to understand. Your words are being slurred. Like I couldn't. I'm not quick witted right now. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you understand the words that are coming this out of my I mouth? know that this is an Independence Day. <laughs> no, wait, no. Oh, fuck. See how slow I am? I thought that was Will Smith in Independence Day. That's Chris Tucker in Rush Hour. <laughs> That's right. Holy shit. Welcome to Earth. I'm just afraid That's- that... Like much in real, much like in real life, when you're drunk, you just assume everyone loves you. But then when you're sober, right. people hate you. Just, yeah, like I'm just like someday you will find me <laughs> caught beneath the landslide. People fucking love this song. I'm singing it so <laughs> the well. The champagne supernova. Like in my mind, that's awesome. This is so fun. <laughs> 
And the thing is, people listen to podcasts <laughs> at their most sober. They're at work. They're at the gym. This they're driving. This is someone's driving. 9 a.m. commute through traffic, and it's my Saturday night, drunk as fuck, ready to go out in lower Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? How is that fair? I had a tight futon game in college, y'all. <laughs> listen, listen, okay? I was on that tight futon shit. I fucking lifted it up, turned it into a bed when necessary, lifted yeah, it up, yeah. turned it into a uh-huh. sofa. That's what's up. That's me and Ken Ryan. We playing Madden. You know what I'm saying? What Madden did you guys play? I didn't actually play Madden. I just didn't. I had no idea what people actually did on futons. Did you guys, did you play, do you have a video game that you equate with your freshman year of college? No, I never play video games. I do. <laughs> I <right>. do. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. That's good. That's that was good. so fine. sobering. That's fine. I, uh, everybody else says Halo. <laughs> hey, I remember thinking I wanted to break my roommate's Halo game in half so they couldn't play anymore. <laughs> just the CD snapped into two. That's what I wanted to do. Just break it in half and put it back in the box. That's what that's what Halo Two is actually. You break ah. the Halo in half and then you put the broken CD in. All right, one last question. Mister Belding writes: fake name, real question, real email, real person. So I'm a junior at University of Washington, and I'm a political science major. I have straight A's and going to law school after graduation. My girlfriend, on the other hand, is a sophomore in college. I'm not a pedophile and is majoring in philosophy. She always compares our workloads and says that I have it so easy. She has bad grades and isn't going anywhere in life, and I swear she wants to mooch off me when I'm a lawyer. Should I break up with her and date a smart girl, or should I keep her around for the sex? (laughs) (laughs) I'm dying over here. You son of a bitch. You absolute asshole. My favorite part of that was listening to you read that question because it's like even if I didn't understand the words, even if I zoned out and didn't listen to what you were saying, you're like your read of that is it's filled with hate for that guy. This is probably the worst person that's ever written in, right? You should I dump my dumbass girlfriend? Yes, if that's the way you think of your girlfriend, she should dump you. We should fucking find out who she is and be like, hey, uh, your boyfriend's a goddamn piece of shit who doesn't appreciate you. <laughs> I cannot believe that you would write such a rude email about someone you're supposedly in love with. You know what we should do is answer this question in his perfect world. This is what he wants this answer to be. Ready? (laughs) Holy shit, a pimp and a philosopher writes in. I'm getting straight A's and going to law school after graduation. Should I dump my B.I. to Finally, someone who's doing something with his life. I mean, this girl is just a... Just cut the ball point. and chain, dude. You got to get rid of that dead weight. She's holding you back. She thinks her work's as hard as you? No, I don't think so, man. You're a lawyer. Do you know the kind of poon you're going to be able to pull? Girls that respect you. Girls that know you're a million times smarter and a million times more successful than they could ever be. <laughs> and this dog. girl sounds like a real... She really does sound like a grade-A poon Annie with her yeah. bad grades. She's not going anywhere. I agree with you. She's not going anywhere. If she's- Let's take this one step further. Most girls are actually like this girl. So good luck finding a girl who appreciates you for the awesome man that you are. This is what you do. You keep her for the sex. Obviously, cool. you got to get your D-dubs. Yep. Uh-huh. But at the same uh-huh. time, once you find that hot lawyer chick you gotta cut that ball and chain off let her you're drift to the bottom of, of the shit, ocean man you're a piece of shit i understand that you support the podcast that you listen that you wrote in and holy shit i fucking appreciate that buy a razor from harry's but tell you what <laughs> <laughs> tell you what Mal, this is the last episode fucking... you can listen to how's that you're done you're cut off we just, this is the first time in podcast history that we demanded that someone not stay with it. <laughs> that's from now on, that's the golden achievement you can get on our podcast. We cut someone off. We kick, and can you please, can we, can we honor that? Can you please at never listen point, to at it? At this point, I would be proud to call you not a fan. <laughs> I would be honored if you never heard my voice If again. you hated me, I would take that as, as, a, as a badge of honor. I really would. As more than a compliment. <laughs> Because, uh-oh, you're a low life. <laughs> Yo, that one's for Ben. <laughs> oh, mercy me. <laughs> ah, mercy again. <laughs> this guy is a terrible, terrible person. Yeah, should I break up with my g- girlfriend? Yes, do break up with her. But not for the reason that you're thinking about breaking up with her. Break up with her because you don't respect her. How's a little, okay, a little bit of a silver lining here. Uh, hopefully we opened your eyes as to what a meanie you can be. <laughs> Maybe you should start respecting your girlfriend for majoring in something that she loves 
and struggling with her grades because sometimes work does not or school does not come as easy as it does for you. And maybe you can, you know, maybe you should break up with this girlfriend, but maybe the next one you have a little bit more empathy. That's true. Nobody's exactly like you, and that's okay. That being said, please never listen to this podcast again, I guys. Think if you, you're done, if everyone else can tell one other person to, because we really don't want our viewership to drop. Yeah. Yeah, because our viewership is going up right now. I'd really hate for it and to like, drop. Yeah, like, because I'm, I look at the numbers and like, if we don't hit thirty thousand in the first week, like, I'm gonna blame this dude because like he's gonna stop listening. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if all of you can just tell one person, I'd really appreciate that. Amir personally would appreciate. I that. I personally really would appreciate. And I'd personally that. like to come and break your iPod, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Belding, <laughs> Mr. Dennis Haskins. <laughs> Uh, it's actually Dennis Haskins. <laughs> oh my god! I can't I'm believe- doing something with my life. <laughs> I'm a fucking lawyer. <laughs> of course, he's a lawyer. Lawyers are, in general, terrible people. My father's a lawyer. He called you part of the family, not but 48 hours ago. <laughs> Maybe I'm the small-minded As he idiot that I'm claiming- a frisbee to- <laughs> at me that I said I must return to a beer. <laughs> yeah, in fact, he wants all of his possessions back. Everything that he gave you. I know he purchased some food for the the house. He wants the chips back, the remainder of the cookies. <laughs> you can imagine how small that is. Uh, yeah, I do regret saying that about lawyers. I know a lot of great lawyers. I shouldn't have said that. Lawyers are just stereotypically. Uh, have, everybody have, that's not my lawyer sucks. Okay? Yeah, everybody that every lawyer that I don't know is sucks. <laughs> but the ones that I know are great people. Uh, yeah, now we're more than out of time. Uh, thanks so much for listening, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed uh, having it. Let us know what you think as much about. As we the... enjoy drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a. Oh mercy! So th- <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say it, someone's probably gonna think that you said it. Actually, <laughs> no, we don't sound alike. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Um, here's the thing you guys can do to support the show. If you're at your computer. Uh, it would really help if you subscribe to the show on iTunes. We stopped calling out for that, but that really is helpful for other people to find us through their iTunes right. ranking. Uh, and it's pretty easy. You just search Jake and Amir on the iTunes podcast store, and you find If I Were You. This is how drunk you need and to get to finally, a, to finally plug us on iTunes. There's a button that says subscribe. <laughs> it just starts downloading the episodes automatically. You don't have to listen oh, through iTunes. You, should, really hey, know. Hey, you can man. still listen We're on, gonna call I, it a night, on SoundCloud. This was supposed to be a free Season game, but I think you're actually com. done. <laughs> I think, I think it's more than half time at this point. <laughs> this is supposed to be a pregame, and it's the goddamn postgame show. <laughs> That's the sound of the buzzer there. Uh, so, yes, please subscribe and keep listening to it any way you can. And uh, thank you so much for listening, literally everybody except for Mr. Belding. You are a terrible <laughs> human being. And uh, we're going we're gonna to close the show by uh, showing one more or listening to or hearing one more or showing or playing or uh, just playing. <laughs> He's broken. <laughs> just playing, playing, uh, playing. The back. Right, we got a reprogram in here. here. Yeah. Hey, we're going to end this show by playing one more theme song submissions that we got. Keep them coming. You guys are so talented. We love you all except for Mr. Belding. This one is from Charlie. Please enjoy. Thanks so much for listening. Bye, everybody. If I were you, if I were you, would you pull through for me? Now you're alone and I am too. Now you're Sit and wait for ten winners to pass Just to see the song through the glass